Hi everyone, welcome to Pulse of the Port. I'm your host, Sean Horish. As you can see, we have an amazing view of one of the many ships making its way to the Port of Long Beach with trade activity all around us. The port handles billions of dollars of imported cargo each year, but have you ever wondered if the products coming into our country are safe to use or coming into the country legally? In our first story, we'll meet a clandestine group of scientists who are fighting a daily battle to protect American consumers and the economy. Let's join field reporter Gabriela Fresquez for a tour of the U.S. Customs and Border Protection's Los Angeles Laboratory. Hey everyone, I'm Gabriela Fresquez, and today we're at a generally undisclosed and pretty top secret place near the Port of Long Beach. We're at the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Los Angeles Laboratory. Here, a dedicated team of chemists, scientists, and engineers support CBP field officers and other law enforcement agencies in a high-tech battle to keep harmful and illegal products from entering the United States. This Los Angeles facility is one of nine CBP labs in the U.S. Together, they form a scientific and forensic arm known as Laboratories and Scientific Services. And some goods that come through the Port of Long Beach end up right here for testing and analysis. We are under the Department of Homeland Security. So we look at products that are coming into the Port of Long Beach, whether they are trade products coming in on a container or a passenger coming on a cruise ship. We look at food products to plastics to textiles. We look at stuff that you would put into your homes and into your bodies. CBP also helps to enforce the standards set by other agencies, like the Food and Drug Administration and the Consumer Product Safety Commission standards that may not exist in places where some of these products are made. So now I'm here with Ken and we're in the organics lab, is that correct? That's correct. And as soon as I walked in I noticed something that kind of looks out of the ordinary in a, in a laboratory. It's a little thing of honey here. Mm -hmm. so, so what do you do with this? Is this one of the products that comes in through the Port of Long Beach? Yes, it's one of the many products we get here. China is sending us lots and lots of samples of honey at a much lower than fair price value. So it's taking money away from the American economy as well as the producers of honey here. So what we're checking for is a country of origin as well as if it matches a sugar profile of honey. So what were you looking for on this? No, this says imitation honey. Right, so. that says imitation honey. So we were checking to see if it contained any honey whatsoever because it was brought in through China. In order to test these, what we would do is we would measure out a certain amount, about 10 grams roughly, and then dissolve it in water and then add a certain amount of a, another solvent. We have our HPLC system, which has already injected our sample, and we can see a couple of different peaks on this. So we can see that this sample actually kind of looks like a regular honey sample. So this is the inorganics laboratory, is that correct? And I, I noticed you have a bunch of toy cars here. Is this what you guys do in your spare time? Uh, not exactly. What we're doing here is we're testing uh, the paint for lead content. Right. And there's a certain uh, level that we're looking for. These tested uh, above that level. And for the most part, what would you say is a percentage of products that do test positive for these higher levels of lead? A large percentage of the stuff we get do test, do test high. We're here in the textiles lab, and I'm noticing there's a bunch of different fabrics on here. Why are these in here? Uh, Primarily, they are here for the analysis. Uh, typically, these fabrics are claimed to be rain, uh, rayon and linen. And if, if they are linen majority, they go duty free. But what happens in actuality is that manufacturers are blending them with some other fibers and faking them as uh, linen rich fabrics. Basically, what the manufacturer is trying to do is avoid paying duty. We are trying to find out what the right classification is, what the right percent duty should be. Um, so, mom, dad, don't get any ideas. This is actually some of the other materials and wardrobe that they're checking out here in the textiles lab. Um, some very interesting stuff here. Very unusual, actually. I don't think this stuff goes together, but um, it's all got to be checked out. Maybe I'll try some on. Another unique feature of this lab is that it has mobile vans that can quickly provide forensic support to CBP officers out in the field. Normally what we do to the officer is providing an actual assessment of the scene that they have so they don't have to create mass panic when there is none. This mobile lab is all about rapid deployment and it's loaded with equipment that can identify chemicals, controlled substances, explosives, and weapons of mass destruction 
such as chemical and radioactive agents. This is a hazmat ID, detects powders and liquids, and it provides you with a very, very general signal of this is what it could be. This is our radiological, the most sensitive, sensitive one. This one will tell you exactly what radioisotope it is. You don't have to be a fan of CSI to appreciate what the men and women of the CBP do to protect not only our public health and safety, but also our economy. Each day in the U.S., they seize about three and a half million dollars worth of knockoff products that violate intellectual property rights. They also keep the goods safely moving through the Port of Long Beach, which benefits us all. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Gabriela Fresca. Thanks, Gabriela. The Los Angeles lab also provides forensic services for CBP field officers and other law enforcement agencies to prevent illegal drugs from entering the country. Believe me, they can find a fingerprint on just about anything. Check this out. We will get evidence from the field, uh, whether it's guns or money or drug bundles or whatever, and we'll try to use chemical processes on it to make latent prints, which means things that you can't see with the naked eye, appear. This is a part of a drug bundle. When uh, the bad guys bring the drug bundles across, usually speaking, they'll put the drugs inside of a plastic bag and they'll wrap it with tape and maybe they'll put grease on it or they'll do a lot of different things to it, try to keep us from being able to, to actually find evidence on it. In this case, we've got a uh, kind of uh, purplish dye on this. It's called gentian violet, and it's supposed to develop prints on the sticky side of tape. Plastic bags and stuff like that, we'll have to go and super glue that. We'll fume it with super glue, which is a relatively uh, old process in the fingerprint world. And that super glue will stick to the print, and then we'll douse it with another chemical, uh, which is orange, and then we'll use a laser to excite it. Marcos here will take the document, or the plastic bag in this case, and he will shine the forensic laser on it. This is a very powerful beam of light. It will cause the prints to fluoresce a bright orange. And we take photographs of it too, so we can do our examination on that. And then once he's found the print, they'll take a picture of it. And that's what it looks like. This team is remarkable, and we look forward to learning more about them in the future. After the break, we'll see one of the biggest projects in port history as construction gets underway. You might call it a bridge to prosperity. Stay tuned. <laughs>